Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, Sarah here with Get Positive Dog Training, and we're talking all about problem solving for puppy biting. And here's the thing, there are three major tips that I want you to focus on to help your puppy stop that puppy biting, which is gonna cause you less stress and you'll enjoy your puppy a little bit more. All right, the first tip for helping problem solve your puppy's biting is management. We need to make sure that you're first picking up and managing your environment, taking away the items that your puppy wants to chew on that you'd rather he not chew on. For example, your shoes and socks, which are really highly reinforcing to a puppy because they smell so good. So get those out of the picture. Don't allow your puppy to practice behaviors that you don't want, like chewing on your arm, which is the second tip. We want to make sure that we are redirecting, not correcting your puppy, because that's going to create a negative association with you. If they're getting really over aroused with your hands, we also need to work on calm handling, which is tip number three. But I'll get into that. Let's go back to this redirection. You want to make sure that while you're managing and preventing your puppy from practicing chewing on things you don't like, that you're setting them up for success with things that they can chew, like their special toys. So we want to make sure that we're redirecting, not correcting. So if your puppy's chewing on your arm and you yell at them and push them away, you're actually giving more attention to that behavior that you don't want. And that's what they're seeking is attention. Puppies need to chew. They need to fulfill that need. Just like a toddler loves to put things in their mouth or touch everything with their fingers, puppies do that with their mouth, with their teeth. So we wanna make sure that we're giving them enough outlets to fulfill the need of chewing and teething on items that work for them, like squeaky toys, okay? So we wanna redirect, not reinforce this unwanted behavior of chewing on my arms or my feet or my toes. So it's really important that you're not drawing a lot of attention when that behavior you don't like is occurring. So I'm gonna very calmly move my hands away, bring my branches in like I'm a tree, and just ignore this behavior while I'm redirecting his focus elsewhere. Now, if your puppy's not interested in the chew toy, then you can also bring out a piece of food reward and reward your puppy for being calm away from you. Okay, so sometimes the food might be a little bit more reinforcing to get the puppy to do what you want versus going into the correction mode. Because again, when you're just distracting and correcting, you're not teaching your puppy what you do want. So we wanna make sure that we're rewarding that calmness, which leads me to tip number three. Tip number three is teaching your puppy that hands are good things, that hands on them equal calmness. And if you're touching your puppy all the time and petting them quickly, it's very easy to over arouse your puppy and get them excited about your hands. So then they're more likely to chew on your fingers and your skin. So what do you do? You practice first pairing a piece of food with your hand touching your puppy. Now we're going to build up to stroking your puppy, but in the beginning, we're just gonna work on touching and feeding, and he's already interested in a treat on the ground. So I'm just going to first reward him for standing calmly or sitting, and as I touch him, I'm gonna give him a treat. And I'm gonna repeat that until I can see he can handle the treat and the hand at the same time. What I'm later gonna do is build the predicting feature that my hand is going to predict a treat is on its way. All right, the first step is while you have food in your hand, Simultaneously, you're going to reach and feed your puppy. You're gonna to just touch and feed at the same time. Touch and feed. Now hand comes first, touch, feed. Touch, feed. So now the hand is a predictor that the food is coming. Touch, feed. I might try his ear, touch. Feed. If he starts to bite my hand, I've asked for too much. I might lift his ear and feed. I might touch his paw. Really important to work on handling your puppy's paws.
And then once he's accepting this type of handling, I can add my marker signal, which is going to give him more clarity as to why he's getting the treat. So I'm gonna add my clicker once I touch him. As he accepts it, I can start to add more and more strokes. Knowing that the type of handling you're doing may or may not get your puppy aroused. So you wanna make sure that you're keeping your puppy at a low level of excitement to build this calmness with handling. So I'm gonna go back to rewarding calmness. And again, pulling my hands in and I have these toys on the ground readily available for him. What you wanna avoid is reaching up for a new toy that's not present because if he nibbles on your feet or your hands and you go get a new toy, he's learning that nibbling your hands or your feet result in you getting something new for him, which we don't want. So we wanna make sure that we're utilizing the toys that are already down on the ground for him and we're gonna work on this handling. So when I touch, and give him a treat, good things happen. I touch and he stays calm, another treat happens. I can touch his paw and feed, touch his ear and feed. You'll do this anywhere from seven to 10 repetitions at a time and slowly build more and more handling over time. If I start to stroke him and he gets excited, he's saying that's too much, your hands are still very exciting. So we wanna make sure that we're going your puppy's pace and we're not setting them up to fail. So when in doubt, when you're dealing with a lot of puppy biting, ask yourself this, are you managing and preventing the situation? Are you redirecting instead of correcting your puppy? And are you working on teaching your puppy that handling and calm movement is good for your puppy and not getting them over aroused or excited with that movement? rewarding them for that calmness. Let me know how it goes and see you in the next video. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.